All right, this is Steve Asalo and my channel, Vast Motorsports. Thank you for tuning in, and let's see what we're going to be working on today. You never know around here, I could be working on a golf cart, a boat, car, truck, motorcycle, four-wheeler, lawnmower. I don't care what it is. I work on it all. Jack of all trades, master of none, but I can get her done. So anyway, just uh, stick around and check it out. We're going to be doing a big upgrade on this here Easy Go golf cart, 36 volt. And we are going to have it climbing some hill. So uh, this belongs to my buddy Robbie, uh, best friend, bestie. Thank you, Robbie, for being there for me. We do stuff for each other, take care of each other, known them since school. And you can see all the gray, so it's been a long time, all right? And uh, so anyway, we just take care of each other. And everybody that knows me pretty much knows it's hard to get me to work on anything for them because I keep such a busy schedule on my own personal projects. I always like to pick up stuff that's pretty much going to scrap. And I fix and restore and rescue and stuff like that. Most of the stuff I keep, once in a while I'll sell something. But anyway, for me to work on anybody's stuff, that's a big, you're important person. <laughs> so you remember that, Robbie. Remember that when I need to use the lake house, brother. <laughs> All right, so what we're working on today is this Easy Go. It's a TXT 36 volt, and it's got the six six volt batteries in it. Now, as you can see, this cart's been lifted. It's been modified. It's got a really nice kit on it. But anyway, it's got 12 inch rims, 22 inch tire. It's been lifted. And whenever you do a lift and or even four four seats, four seater, and especially when you put the bigger wheels and tires, they recommend that you do a controller upgrade and solenoid upgrade, even battery cables. Well this particular cart is still using the original little six gauge wires and the stock motor and controller and solenoid. So this particular cart is climbing one hell of a hill. And it's not your average somebody out here beside the road climbing a ditch or something saying, oh, I'm climbing a hill. You'll have to stick around till the end of the video to see this hill. Folks, I'm telling you, you won't believe it. Robbie lives out on the lake, and it's uh, steep, steep. Oh, my God, the hill kills everybody trying to walk up and down it. This cart is definitely not made to climb the hill. I cannot believe it did it for a year and a half, uh, a summer and a half, um, because I used to tell him, I was like, dude, this is not built to do this. And he would have four people on it, big cooler, and it did it. It made it. Now, sometimes we would be going up the hill, and it would come to a stop, and the pedal's still to the floor, and people were having to jump off to let it go. But it did it for a year and a half, or a summer and a half, whatever you want to call it. And then... Uh, that's with the regular Duracell blacktop, uh, their lower grade, the lowest one that Duracell makes, which is still a good battery because obviously it made them, it, the batteries were over five years old and they lasted that last year and a half climbing that hill. So what we're doing now is we're going to do a big upgrade. And I do recommend you stick around till the end of the video and let's see if this works. You're going to be able to see with me in real time if it climbs the hill because I didn't go with the Navitas controller and motor and plumb quick and all those real expensive. We don't want to stick three or 4,000 into the cart. We're trying to do this on a budget. If he was going to do that, we might as well sell the cart and buy a side-by-side, -side, which Robbie, I'm not going to say I told you so, but anyway, we are going to upgrade this and it's going to climb the hill. So what we have is first off, I got the new heavy duty forward and reverse switch because this is one of the weak links on this particular cart and these lugs inside here that's just contact points as this big things here as it swivels it's sending electric through these and coming out a different one and these contacts in here decide where it goes well they're just touching you know spring loaded touching and on his cart in there this particular bottom one is burnt black so that's not good at all 
And then of course the cable ends, some of them are pretty rough looking. Uh, once you get corrosion in the end of the wires and stuff, they're not uh, sending, they're building too much resistance. This is the big boy, the 400 amp solenoid. Excuse me, this thing is humongous compared to the stock little one. So that's gonna control and handle the flow that's coming through to the controller and be able to handle it. Then we've got the high torque upgrade motor here. And again, I didn't go with the really high dollar one. You can get this on eBay for about 800 bucks. They build them, or they make them right over in uh, Florida. It says assembled in Mexico. It came out of Florida. But that's the part number in case you're interested. We'll work on 36 or 48 volt. We're running 36. Now the stock motor in these carts is a lot smaller. They're only rated two and a half horse. This one is rated eight horse. So we should see a major difference there. Again, the plum quick, they're really built for speed. We're not worried about the speed. We want the torque because that's what's gonna have this baby climbing the hill. Now I also sent the controller off to a guy named Diesel Tech. He's on eBay. You can find his listing. I might put a link in the bottom here for you in the description. Um, he's helped me out before with a club car controller that I had on one of the flood carts from Hurricane Ian when I was down in Florida that I restored. And I've got the video on that. And then I sent him the controller out of here. He's going to upgrade it from the 250 or 275 stock. It'll release all the way up to 750 amp now. So we're just going to run with that. And again, heck with spending all those thousands on trying to do this upgrade. So also what we're going to do is I took the batteries out, used them as cores. I got the upgraded Duracell compared to what we had. I'm going to clean that battery tray up. That's another fault in these carts is that battery tray likes to rust out. I'm going to clean that up real good and hit it with some rust oleum. And there goes the little stock motor. Sorry for the lighting, but um, we're going to be taking that out. And I recommend you mark your wires with a piece of tape and letter them or number them before you take them off. I'm going to be replacing all the cables anyway, though. It's got these little bitty six gauge. I ordered the whole four gauge kit for everything. And that way to get rid of the corrosion on the ends and stuff that's a build up in them anyway. And you can take the motor out through here when you have the batteries out. That's one option. You know, I always see different things online. That's your one option. Number two is some people jack it up and take this wheel off here to driver's side and take the motor out through here. Me personally, what I'm gonna do is I ordered some leaf springs for it because down here, you're not going to see it right now, but every one of these bushings are missing. They are rotted, and the hill not only is steep, but it's pretty rough, and it rocks a lot and does this and that. All these bushings are missing. It's only got the two leaf leaf springs on it, so I ordered a brand new set of the heavy duty uh, three leafs, and of course, I'm an eBay guy, 60 bucks sent to the door with the bushings in them. And that's going to help this card out a lot for when somebody's sitting on the back or you flip that, put the cooler or whatever. Um, and it's just going to have all the new bushings. So what I'm going to do is I stick my scissor jacks under the sides here on both sides. I'm going to jack it up, undo the brake cables, and undo all these uh, bolts for the bushings and leaf springs and just roll the whole rear end out here where I can flip it over and replace the leaves but also I can replace the motor while it's out here and then just roll it back under and stick it up in the cart. So that works for me, especially since I'm having to do the leaves anyway. So stick around, let's see what we can get done here. All right, now I'm just undoing all my nuts. I got the wires labeled and I'm just undoing the nuts and taking the wires off, laying them to the side. And then I am also going to have to undo this little one here that's holding this wire assembly on and we'll move on to the next come here shop dog hey jasper hey good boy what are you doing buddy you're such a good puppy you are such a good puppy such a good puppy
All right, now I've got all my leaf at the back here loose. Got my little tray for all my bolts in, magnet tray. Don't want to lose anything. Now it's time to zip these nuts off the shock on the bottom here. Now I didn't take the actual uh, the bolt all the way out of the leaves yet because I'm letting it hang. When I get everything loose and get my brake cables and all off, then I'll stick a floor jack under here and let the rear end down and slide the motor and rear out. So I went ahead and, like I said, took the uh, bolts and nuts off the leaves. I didn't pull them all the way out yet, but as you can see, that's what I was talking about. There are no bushings left in these. I undid the nut off the bottom of the shock. Just go ahead and get that worked up out of there now. Which them little bushings are not the best either. Of course, them shocks aren't doing anything. But they're still dampening and rebounding. I probably got some uh, little bushings around somewhere to slip on there. I don't think we're going to bother with putting new shocks on it. But next step, I'm going to pull this little pin, the cotter pin, and then this little pin should push up out of here. Might have to spray it a little, might have to tap it. I'm going to get that up out of here. And then there's a little C-clip right here that's on the uh, brake cable. And pull the brake cable out, and she'll be ready to come down. Just make sure your motor wires and all are undone. And I still got to get the uh, bolts up the very front of the leaf there. But should be a few minutes and have her out, I hope. See if I can show you. This one had a bushing left in it, but when you touch it, it just crumbles apart. So they're no good. Now me personally, I like to do stuff the easy way. Can't stand using the hand tools if I don't have to. Got a wrench, 9 16 on the inside. Watch your hand. when you go busting that loose you don't want it to try to cut your hand or bang it on anything in there again pick up all your nuts and bolts now this will be ready to come out of the front of the leaf but again i got one more on the other side everything else is undone and then i need to slide the jack under it zip it's got three bolts here that hold the motor to the actual housing the differential so I'm gonna pull these three keep the washers on it that one's already loose because that's where that uh, strap was that was holding all the wires going to the motor now that the bolts are out let's see if we can get it to turn and of course she ain't Good old easy go, stuck again. There she goes. Sometimes they like to stick on the shaft. Come on, baby. Oh, hoo, hoo. yeah, there we go. She did not stick. Didn't exactly mean to drop it, but that's all right. Splines look good. Bearings sound good and feel good. So I think we're all right there. All right, so I just got the <clears throat> rear end leaned up against the cart over there with that leaf. Got the jack over here and jacked it up just to where this side is not touching. I could have flipped it all the way over upside down and stuff, but I didn't want to do that because I have the motor off. There is gear lube and it will run down. I don't want it to come out. The seal should hold it, but at the same time, I don't want to chance it. And this way it keeps everything all the weight off this leaf I can change this leaf out first 
and then move the jack to the other side and do the same thing. So these are pretty much just 9 16 I like to go ahead and hit everything with WD-40 first. I already sprayed these new bolts. Pay attention to how everything is put together. Even if you got to get a picture or something ahead of time, make sure you put it right back the same way. This is the factory spot where the shock mount, that's where the shock comes through, and this is the plate for the lift kit. So you want to make sure it's in the same spot, same side. Real quick note I wanted to show everybody is you can see how much stud there is here off the U-bolt because how thin the pack is right here. And there's a lot less here on this side because that pack is so thick. Boy, them are some heavy leaves compared to that. Going to that. All right, so I got the new motor sitting here ready to go on the rear end. And what I'm going to do is I got a little white out here I always keep around the shop. Right here is my bolt hole. So on the outside, I'm going to put a little mark there. And that's the top two. That way, when I go and set it on here, I can line it up easy with these bolt holes. I won't be guessing, oh, do I have it clocked right? <clears throat> I'll just have that mark right there. All right, this motor is heavy. Now, I'm going to take a little of this uh, silicone lube and just put a little dab on there. Not, You don't want too much. You don't want it to create like a hydro lock almost to where it don't let you slide on good. But we want to get a little something on there. And it had a hair little bit on it to start with, but it doesn't hurt just to put a little extra... Like I said, not too much, but just enough to get it where it won't stick or anything if we ever have to remove it again. And hopefully we won't. So now, let's just get her lined up on there. Okay. And she is inserted. We got insertion, folks. Now I'm going to hold it up, get these started. Okay. Make sure it's going in nice and straight. Let's see here. I think I might have started it in the wrong hole there. Those are bolt holes too, but they're the wrong two. We need three, so we're going to turn it right there. Let's clock it there. Let's go back with the ones they were already using, Steve. Okay. All right. Let's zip them on down. Holding the motor straight. Just snug it until we get the others down. All right, once again, I'll come back with the little ratchet because these are only little quarter drive, little 716th. No, yeah, 716th. I don't want to round them off or strip anything. So I'll snug them back up. This one I'm going to leave loose because once I put it back in the cart and get the new wires, I have to put that holder back on there. Don't forget about that. All right, so I want to show you a difference here in the motor. If you can see the main, the black housing part there, what a difference in the armature size and where the brushes are located. That's a lot larger motor. This is a big boy high torque. All right, next I'm going to go ahead and rotate these tires real quick because as you can see, these are getting wore down. They still got a lot of knob to them, but they're nothing like these. Even though these are the same exact size tires, it's just them back ones been on there ever since they've been put on. And it used to be driving around the neighborhood all the time, so it's warmed down. I'm going to go ahead and rotate them. And then I'm going to go ahead and 
have them sitting here waiting for when I slide the rear end under, I can lift up one side, put the wheel on it, go to the other side, jack it up, put the wheel on, and it'll have it a lot closer and safer for when I go to try to put my bolts in since I'm doing it by myself. All right, so that definitely helped. Like I said, I'm doing it all by myself. Now, I don't, you know, think just because it's in there it was real easy. It will tilt if you're not careful. I kept trying to leave the leaf springs up against something so the motor don't just weigh it over and let it flip over. But I was able to get the front two in, the bolts. Now everything is stationary and safe, which it was pretty safe once I had the tires on it. But now, and I forgot to mention on the front, don't put the sleeve in because the bolt is fat enough it takes up the room, it acts as the sleeve on the front. Now back here, I'm gonna pop these out real quick, put the extra set in that I said I ordered. And what I like about all these bushings, they're the nice polyurethane, they're not the rubber. So they ought to last a real long time and they are heavy duty, they'll be able to stand up to the abuse. So that's pretty easy. All right, got one of my last pieces in just now in the mail. I had to go grab it real quick at the mailbox. Good old eBay delivery. I love it. Man, I love it. I had to do an upgrade on the resistor and the diode because the resistor off of this one, uh, these are only 5 16 lugs and it won't fit this new big boy solenoid with the 3 8 lugs so I had to order this one with the 3 8 that had to go right on and come around and circle on to this one and then even a the diode they all use these little bitty diodes between the two lugs here and that won't reach so I ordered this new one it's made for this solenoid it'll go from stud to stud perfectly I'll leave links for all this stuff at the end of the video down in the description that way, if you like what you see on the progress of the performance of how this is doing, and I'll give you a total on everything at the end. Got everything stripped out. Time to start putting the new stuff in. And of course, whenever you're doing custom work, y'all, with aftermarket parts, it's not always just direct plug and play. I'm going to tell you now. I had to fight with a couple things here. Do a little grinding on this shaft to get this lever to fit on it where it's slotted and wouldn't just fit right on nice. Had to do a nice little crimp on the end of my terminals to make them stay on good on the actual spades. And I was able to use the two studs that are on this bracket for this big boy here, but I had to take a drill bit, stick this in a vise, and go sideways and wallow the heck out of them holes to make it where it would fit on the studs, but it is on. So, just be prepared when you're gonna do custom work like this. You need to be a little mechanically inclined to make stuff work. And this is the four gauge kit that I upgraded to for the wires, just the battery ones. These are going to the motor. These are in between the controller. Uh, 
as you can see I ordered it with the 5 16 ends to match and there is a heck of a difference in the wire as you can see even without the extra insulation there's still a big difference in these factory 6 gauge versus these 4 gauge and even the way the ends and all are cramped I mean that's a big big difference y'all so yeah we'll be carrying a lot more power through these wires all right all right got her all wired up got all my nice four gauge wires on the brand new batteries got the new heavy duty solenoid in got the nice new diode going across on the little ones got the resistor back here on the big studs got my big 3 8 uh, terminals on those two uh, the big lugs I got them crimped on the wires so now we got nice fresh power going to everything and these are new components here new heavy duty solenoid had the box sent off and upgraded um, so now it's supposed to it's a 400 amp but it's supposed to release all the way up to 750 so I guess we're gonna find out in a few got the brand new forward and reverse heavy duty switch in I cleaned up some of the wiring here got all these nice and neat and strapped to the main positive so we'll know and really only got the charging wire coming over here for the negative to go with the ground uh, there is some other nasty looking wiring here somebody done for the lights it's going to the light switch and I don't really want to mess with all that right now maybe another day Robbie but they don't have a converter in here they're just running on these two six volts so that's how it's getting its power uh, well, actually, I'm sorry. This is the fused power going to that switch over there. It's using these two batteries. This is all the grounds. Anyway, I'm just making sure they're out of the way of the forward reverse switch. Got them all tie strapped here. Nice. Everything is routed through there. I'll show you back to the motor. Uh, I always put a piece of tape over the reverse buzzer. A lot of people just unhook it. I think we need it hooked up. And then it's not very loud with the piece of tape over it but loud enough um, let me take you around I'll show you down on the motor the wiring I do have to use the rivet gun in a second to rivet the bracket back on for the seat that somehow was messed up but uh, try and take care of everything I can for you brother while I got it over here and underneath here show you all right we got the brand new high torque motor, which is a lot larger than the stock one. And then we've got all our wires nice and secured. Four gauge, nice and fat all the way back. Everything is nice and clean on all the terminals. And I was messing around with it. We will go for a test drive in a few minutes here. And then, like I said, I'll finish the video when I actually take it over to Robbie's. But... Boy, that solenoid really clicks. That's a loud one because it's sending uh, such a big contact with it. She's definitely jumpy. Woo! She might pop a wheelie for all I know. That's just giving it a little bit of pedal and she's jumpy. So let me get this seat bracket on, put the seat. We'll take her out for a little spin, break her in. All right, here we go. It pulled out of the garage pretty good. Let's see how she does. Hold on, Jasper. It's going to be hard to hold you, too. All right, I'm going to try to give it some pedal here, but it's kind of rough on this. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> hold on, Jasper. Hold on, boy. It's a little rough over here on these roots. I'll tell you what, the cart sure is quiet now. Because before the, uh, oh man, the leaf springs, all them bushings, it was a beating and a banging. All right, time to go test it out. All right, this is the four-wheel drive trail <laughs> down to the lake. 
and I know you can't tell on the video how steep it is, but it's pretty steep. It's actually hard on the brakes to keep this baby stopped. So, we're going to come down here. What's up, Jasper? What are you doing, boy? Let's back this thing around. Sorry for all the bad movement on the video, y'all. All right, here goes the test. We're going to find out together, y'all, is she going to climb it? Oh, man. Woo. That's some torque. Heck yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, she climb it, all right. What the hell? <laughs> oh, my God. I have to let off the pedal. It's too freaking crazy and rough. Whoa. Oh, my God. Well, she is definitely climbing it. That's no problem. Holy crap. Wow. All right, y'all. Woo! Oh my God, it climbs it now. Top of wheel. <laughs> it climbs it, but will it stop? Yeah. Oh man, it definitely climbs this shit now. Woo! All right, so anyway, if I get a chance later, I will get Robbie, which is the owner, and we'll get a little video and see his reaction on it. If not, I might be just closing it out like this, but I can tell you right now, it performs, y'all. It definitely climbs. All right, have a good one. Jasper! All right, come on, jump on this motherfucker. Well, first off, look. All new Yeesh. batteries. New batteries, big, thick cables. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Look, big ass solenoid. Jesus Christ. The controller I sent it off had it upped to 700 amps from 250. Uh -huh. New switch under here, your forward and reverse. Look at the new motor in there. Shit. It's got the new heavy duty. Big, big torque motor. Look under here at the leaf springs. Big heavy duty new leafs front and back. <laughs> Dude. Let's go for a ride. Let's see. Jump on. Go, Jump go. on. Come on, man. Oh, yeah. You ain't got to walk now. Oh, no, there's no more walking here. What? Nah, he was down here a second ago. Got Good? Yep. Look, that lets you know you're in reverse. Hear the little beep beep beep. Making a noise. I'm scared. <laughs> you better hold on. I know that when you get on. Oh, shit. Down. A fork. Yep. Hang on, hang on. You better hold on. Yep. You better hold on to something. I'm well, holding on. No, for real. I'm holding on. Oh, she got it full of drop. Baby, go. Huh? Baby, I, I, you got it. You, it won't way. let you steer when you got this much weight on. Woo! Holy shit! <laughs> hold on, hold on, sir. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there ain't nothing to get behind this motherfucker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to go now, I'll you tell you that. It's got the power now on it. I've never been able Oh, girl, I'm to I've been drunk since the Yeah, we're going <laughs> to... Very quiet. Well, It'll do Levin. better when we're not when on the back. Well, is... But you always got four people on here. So. No, nah, we didn't die. <laughs> not yet. We ain't done yet. Yeah, we didn't stop yet. We ain't done yet. <laughs> front door, baby. Like a front... She did not want to stop going on. Front door oh, the bricks. <laughs> you know what? Make me walk... No, I, want the... I don't think it'll fit down through there. I don't know. Uh, there's, there's still everywhere. All over. Okay. You better jump. Yeah, I'll crack. Hey! <laughs> Damn, I want the shrimp off of me. <laughs> All right, so did it climb the hill or what? It did. 